What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to optimize your NVIDIA installation or drivers on Windows 11. Linked down in the description below, you'll find a Windows 11 general optimization guide that I'd highly, highly recommend you follow. It shows you a ton of steps to take that'll result in lower latency, better FPS, etc, etc for games and every other task that you do on your Windows 11 installation. This video is specifically going to be focusing on the NVIDIA drivers and optimizing them on Windows 11. Let's get into it. First of all, we'll be downloading and installing the NVIDIA drivers on our Windows 11 installation over here. If you'd like to see how to upgrade, check the description down below for a video on how to do so from Windows 10. In the description down below, you'll find a link to this website over here. You may notice that it looks slightly different to the normal NVIDIA driver download site, but it is in fact an NVIDIA site. What you'll do is you'll select your graphics card, so in my case, GeForce 10 series, then it's a 1080 Ti that I'm currently running. For the operating system, you currently don't have Windows 11 here, but in the future you probably will. For now, select Windows 10 64-bit, then Windows driver type. This is something that this page gives you that the other pages don't. You get to pick between standard and DCH, which is the Windows Store version. I much prefer the standard version, but of course, if you download the driver from the other NVIDIA web pages, you'll be downloading the DCH version. What you download here doesn't really matter, but I just prefer the standard version. Language, set to whatever your current language is, and recommended slash beta, leave it at all. Then all you have to do is click search, and you'll see a list of drivers down here. What you want to do is look for the latest version that says Game Ready Driver, rather than Studio Driver. Then simply click on it, and a download should immediately start after clicking Download once again, and Download. There we go a 700 megabyte file, and of course this will only get bigger in the future as far as I would think. So all you have to do is wait for this download to finish, click on it to open it up, and then follow through with the installation as you would usually. The only thing different is that you're running a Windows 10 installation on Windows 11. Does it matter currently? Probably not. There's not much that's changed between Windows 10 and 11 when it comes to software, as software just works through the upgrade process. I didn't have to reinstall it or anything like that. So I'll simply wait for it to unpack. After the installation completes, you should be able to open up the NVIDIA control panel by right clicking your desktop and then clicking NVIDIA control panel. But because I installed this on a virtual machine, I won't be able to show you that as my graphics card won't be detected. But regardless, let me go ahead and open up the NVIDIA control panel on a Windows 11 computer. When the NVIDIA control panel opens up, you'll see something like this. On the 3D settings tab, the very first page, simply make sure that you have it set to use the advanced 3D image settings over here and then click the take me there button. That'll take you across to the manage 3D settings submenu over here. All that you want to do is go through the settings here and make sure they closely match my settings. I'm going to go ahead and adjust them to better be what you should try and match. There we go. I've run through all of the settings here and adjusted it to be something more like what yours should be. Of course, you may have more or fewer options than me, depending on what kind of graphics card you have. I'm stuck with a 1080 Ti, at least until stock of the 3080 Ti comes around or one of the 30 series in my country, South Africa. Of course, for a reasonable price, that is. Anyways, what you're going to want to do is pause the video here and run through each of these options on your computer, getting them to match as closely as possible. If you have more options that I don't, simply use common sense or follow the NVIDIA suggestions that usually have the NVIDIA icon next to them. Otherwise, if you're missing certain options, don't worry about it. Simply skip over them. So here's page one. Here's page two. And here's page three. Super simple. Now I would highly recommend setting these up on the global settings page as every other program that's added to the program settings page over here should, I think, start with the same settings as the global settings tab. Of course, if you'd like, you can drop into specific games in here, such as say Modern Warfare, and adjust them to better match the global settings that we have over here that I showed you just now. Of course, you may have more or fewer options once again, depending on what game you have selected. Usually, these ones over here are more than good enough. If you'd like to see more specialized guides, make sure to check out the rest of my channel or simply search for them. But of course, most of the guides, if not all of them, should have very similar settings to the settings that I just showed you here. Now that we're done here, let's move on to the next tab. We're going to head across to Display Change Resolution. This page is incredibly important, especially if you have a high refresh rate screen. My main monitor over here is G-Sync capable and it's 144 Hertz. 
What you need to do is for every one of your screens, make sure that it's set to the maximum or advertised resolution and refresh rate or FPS rate that you bought your monitor for. If you bought a 144Hz monitor, set it to 144Hz. And if you bought a 2K144 monitor, set it to 2K144. Basically, you want to set it to whatever you bought your monitor as. Sometimes, at least from what I've seen, it'll offer resolutions and refresh rates that aren't necessarily supported by the display, though it is incredibly rare. If, for some reason, you choose a resolution or FPS rate that isn't supported, as soon as you click apply, you'll notice that your screen goes black. Don't worry, don't click anything, wait around 15 seconds, and it should automatically revert back. Why is that? Well, simply if you hit apply, you'll see a pop up on your screen saying, would you like to keep the settings? You'll either click yes or no. And if you don't click anything, it'll simply revert, which is the same as pressing no. It's that simple. At the very bottom, I'd highly recommend clicking use NVIDIA color settings and choosing the highest color depth, the best color format, which for me is only RGB, and an output dynamic range of preferably full rather than limited. If I have a look at my other displays over here, you'll see the settings are slightly off. I'll set it to full and this one also to full. Why is that? Well, if we have a look at the very bottom, output dynamic range allows the user to select the dynamic range 16 to 235 or 0 to 255 for a to BPC of the output, which can preserve shadow and highlight details in the image being viewed. It's better to have the output dynamic range set to full rather than limited, unless your screen looks absolutely terrible with it set to full. Anyways, once you've adjusted all of your screens to be the highest refresh rate that's advertised for the monitor, and of course the highest resolution, click apply and your monitors will readjust. From here, there's not too much else that we'd need to do other than maybe heading across to the Setup G-Sync tab if you have a G-Sync monitor. I'd recommend enabling it and enabling it for windowed and full screen mode applications over here, then clicking apply once again. As for adjust desktop size and position, I'd highly recommend that for all of your screens, you set it to no scaling. If for some reason you do need to scale, choose full screen or aspect ratio above, and then perform scaling on the display if it's available, such as the one over here rather than the GPU. This offloads any extra work that the GPU has to do, giving you higher FPS and just giving it to the screen to process itself as it can probably do that. Most modern screens are able to scale. It's that simple. Besides that, something that's not necessarily too important is the adjust desktop color settings tab over here. If for some reason your monitor doesn't look the way you want it to, I'd recommend you come over here and for each of your monitors, you adjust it to better match your personal preferences. You have three images over here. And if you're adjusting multiple monitors like me, I'd highly recommend you open up an image in something like Google Chrome and place it right in between your two monitors. That way you can very easily compare the colors between all of your monitors. Then you can simply fine tune it and adjust it as you'd like. If you'd like just a bit of extra something for your games, usually messing around with the digital vibrance is something that people do. I'd recommend you crank it up at least a little bit if you'd want some extra something from your computer. Don't crank it up too high, otherwise your colors will definitely go off completely. But hey, some people are into that, especially for desaturated games such as CSGO. But anyways, after clicking a final apply, we're all done with optimizing NVIDIA on our new Windows 11 install. Thank you for watching. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.